So I'm going to be attempting to recreate the Minilogue patch I used on my cover of Limerence by Eve Chimmer. Just as a sort of disclaimer, the sound kind of needs that cascading sort of ping pong delay just to bring it to life, give it that width. Um, it just kind of doesn't sound quite right without it. The Minilogue does have a delay, but it's kind of, it's a mono delay and it's not long enough to, to get the rhythmic sort of cascading sound that you need to get it as close to the original as possible, so you'll need a delay plug-in, a guitar pedal, an outboard effects unit to get the sound, it's just, um, yeah, the second half of the video I'm going to do the effects side of things, I'm going to use the same pedal as I used on my cover, which was the Boss ME50, but I think I'm going to use a couple of extras as well, maybe a couple of overdrive pedals, um, just to get it that kind of dirty kind of sound that you hear on the original track. I'm fairly certain that the original's a sequenced, like, sample. There's a sort of rising metallic element to the sound. I couldn't get it on the synth. I tried to do it on a hardware sampler, but it just didn't really sound right. I tried even layering, like, a synth tone with, like, a metallic sound. I can't remember what it was. I think it was, like, a, a gate closing or something like that. Um, and, yeah, it didn't really work, so I just went with the synth in the end. This will be my first tutorial, so... Hopefully you can follow my Glaswegian accent. Let me know if you find it useful, if you've got any requests, and I'll look into it. You're going to want to take down the step resolution down to an eighth. This bit's pretty straightforward. Just take the filter down to zero, turn up the, en the envelope, about halfway. Little bit of resonance. The Minilog's got a famous kind of thing where there's a bit of a clicky sort of like attack and release on it, so we're going to deal with that in a second. But first, we need to just kind of get these set up. You can sort out the attack, the dodgy attack sort of thing, just by turning up the attack just above, slightly above zero. Same with the um, filter envelope. Also, it helps just have a bit more release as well. I think it sort of closes quite quickly on the release as well, if it's at zero, so. Sounds about right. So there we go, right, we're on a square wave. I'm pretty sure it's a square wave that's in the original. I'm actually pretty sure the original's a sample. I don't think it's a synthesized, like, um, or it might have been a synth originally, but it's been sampled from somewhere. There's a rising sort of like metallic sound in it, which makes me think it's a sample. I use a triangle wave just because it thickens it up, but you can use, you could use a, a square wave if you wanted, like an octave lower. But um, we're going to use this sort of VCO2 mod in a second, so like um, I think it just kind of makes sense to use the triangle. 
just kind of demonstrating that here with the square. You can sort of see what, what's going on a wee bit. It's up to yourself whether you want to use it, which one you want to use. It's good. I think ring, ring mod can work on this as well, but I kept it off. I noticed when I was making this video that you can, um, if you change the pitch envelope with sync on, then it kind of alters the texture quite dramatically. So you could actually use that if you wanted to personalize this kind of patch, then you could do that. as well just because it's quite a sort of dirty kind of sound on the original. But definitely just play about with the envelopes, play about with any of these kind of settings like see how you how you feel about them. I don't actually use the delay, the mini logs in built delay on my version. If I do, then I use it for like a sort of noise, an extra noise texture. I think there's a wee bit of slap back, just but the mini logs delay is so noisy that like um, it just kind of it adds a wee bit. Of, I usually have it on in all my patches anyway, just because it kind of adds a bit of atmosphere to them. You can do kind of cool like dubby stuff like I'm doing here. I think I did that in my cover video as well. And that's more or less there for the dry sound. The final thing is the LFO section, which I've just got going to just on a sort of triangle like shape, just going to I just to the shape. Like so the shape on each of the, the oscillators. It just seems to add a bit more sort of movement to the sound, which is quite nice. Quite a watery kind of sound you get from it, so quite enjoy that. What I'm doing here is I'm just syncing that up to the BPM. So it just goes around every, like, two bars, which is quite cool. Again, you can play about with that if you wanted to make it more sort of of like a tapey sound, then you could you could send that LFO to the pitch instead and just really really subtly add it. Cut off you could do if you liked, whatever sounds good. The final thing is, I noticed that the original is um, about 15 cents up. Tuning, so you can, if you want to be extremely like a specific, like a, a tend to be with things, like um, then you could do that if you wanted to. <laughs> if you wanted to do a direct replica of it.
so I'm going to try and do this in kind of one go. Um, I had a really long sort of video that was that I created just after filming the first one while I was putting the patch together. But I thought it might be interesting to see how the uh, how the effects that I had them going, I think, when I recorded the original cover. So I'm hoping this will work. Um, I don't know how you'll be able to see it from this angle, but I've got... Basically, the, the time that I recorded the, the original cover, um, I think I was only using the stereo delay on this pedal here, which is a Boss ME50. I can't remember if I used this overdrive pedal but um, the original take that I did, which was kind of live, most of it, um, it was in the tape, and I, I kind of drove, drove the tape quite hard. Um, I recorded it quite hot just to get the kind of the dirt and the sort of grit from it. So I wanted to kind of like see if I could maybe try and replicate that with pedals. So we'll start from the beginning. Um, this is always kind of a safe bet on a synth anyway. This pedal. So this is a Boss Super Overdrive. It does tend to cut out quite a lot of the, the low end. And it's a very mid-rangey pedal. But that's good for adding a bit of dirt to things. I'm just going to turn this back up here. So I usually just leave that on at like zero. Drives down at zero here. Roll off the tone a wee bit. Levels at full. And the original cover that I did I use this pedal and it's just on the sort of ping pong delay pan setting, it's called. So you hear it here. It's just a matter of finding the time on it. The original is quite, um, the delay is actually quite full on in the original, so. It's like there. So you can hear how you sort of build up that cascading sort of sound that I was talking about. Um, I used, on this pedal as well, I think I used the spring reverb. That's how I kind of wanted to get closer to the the metallic sound that I mentioned, like um, these little sort of artifacts that come from this kind of cheap pedal. Um, I thought kind of brought the sound closer to the original, and I couldn't replicate the metallic sound 
itself because I believe it's a sample, but um, that was my kind of interpretation of it, I think. Like, um, it's a wee bit of that. I also want to say that if you don't have a stereo pedal, you can do it with, I've got a Akai, is it an Akai? Yeah, it's an Akai analog delay pedal um, that I bought years ago, and you can get quite a good sound on that as well. Actually, the, the repeats on this are much more pleasant than the stereo repeats on the ME50, so let's see if I can get it close. charm of the original sound is the stereo effect which you'll hear. And that's basically it. 